My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we'll have our lesson number 179 on the series in the series of basic math. Today we'll solve a problem on the topic of weighted average. Weighted average problem as you can see is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says the table below the table that is given to us here, the table below shows the frequency distribution frequency distribution of a variable x. The question is very simple, very straightforward. We are to find, we are to find the mean of the distribution. What is the mean of the distribution? And here is the frequency distribution. We have a variable x which takes on the value of a quarter, half, a three quarter, five quarter, three halves, seven quarter. And these are the frequency one quarter appears four times, a half value of a half, x takes the value of a half, x takes the value of a half six times, it takes the value of a three quarter nine times, and so on and so forth. What we're going to do now is what we always do. I'm going to give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. I insist that you do the problem yourself first. Once you have done so, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Okay, I'll give you five seconds, as I said, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. I'll get out of your way. All right. As you can see, if something like this appears in the exam, it doesn't matter which exam you're talking about. It makes no difference which exam you're preparing for, whether you're preparing for ACT or SAT or TES or GMAT or GRE. All of these exams are time exam. Time is of the essence. Every second counts. When something like this appears in the exam, you should understand and you should realize that the writer of the exam, these people who write the exam, these people who give you the questions, these people are not insane. They are not insane. They are not unreasonable. They don't want you to do this problem in a very classical, very traditional way where you do out every step of the way in a very academic, very traditional, very orthodox, very conventional, very geeky, very nerdy way. You have to find some shortcuts. Let's see what we can do here. If you, can, if you, if you sit there and multiply out everything in a very traditional way, as I said, it will take forever. That's not what we're going to do here. Well, I see a quarter, a half, a three quarter, five quarter, three halves, seven quarter. Why don't we convert all of these in quarters? What we're going to do is, listen carefully, we're going to convert all of these in quarters and we're simply going to count the quarters. And at the end, okay, keep this thing, for example, at the end, if it turns out, say for example, if it turns out, at the, at the end, we end up with 400 and, I'm just going to make it up, 448 quarters. Think of this in terms of money. Since I started out talking about quarters, I was thinking about quarters as in quarters, but now that I have the term uh, in my mind, I'm going to think in terms of money, quarters as in 25 cents. So once we have our quarters, we're going to have to convert them into dollars. We're going to have to convert them, total amount, we, because we're counting by the quarters. We're going to have to convert them the whole number. Say for example, when we do all of our work, at the end it turns out that we have 448 quarters. How, are, how do we convert the quarter, how do we convert a quarter into a dollar? If I have eight quarters, how do I convert it into a dollar? Divide that by four. So, we divide at the end by four and we'll have our answer one, one, two dollars. Hundred and twelve dollars. Once we have our dollars, we'll figure out how many people we have. Think of this in terms of people, okay? Think of it. Let's make it very simple. We have four people. Each of those four people has one quarter. We have six people. Each of that six person has half a dollar. Well, half a dollar is two quarters. Multiply top and bottom by two. So we have four people with four quarters. So we have we have four people, each of them has a quarter. Four people, each of them has a quarter. So that's four quarters. We have six people, each of them have two quarters. You see, two over two over four. This is two over four, that's two quarters. Each of them has two quarters. Each of them has two quarters because we are told that they each have a half a dollar. So half a dollar is two quarters. And there are six people with half a dollar each. But so that's 12 quarters. I'm going to pick up speed now, okay? We have nine people, we have nine people, each of them has three quarters. Well, that's 27 quarters. We have 12 people, and each of those 12 people have five quarters. Well, that's 60 quarters. We have 10 people, each of them has, oh, this is not quarter, this is a half. You have to slow down. We are counting by quarters. We have to convert this into quarter. Six half, uh, uh, three halves, three halves is the same as $1.50. Three halves is one and a half. 
three halves is one and a half because two halves make a make one and uh, three halves make one and a half. I don't know why I'm explaining it in such a simple and in such a silly way. That's what it is, one and a half. And three halves is same as six quarters. So we have ten people. Each of those people have six quarters. Well, that's sixty quarters. And then finally, we have nine people, and each of those nine people has seven quarters. Are you with me so far? Now we're going to count our quarters. That's sixty-three. We're just going to count our quarters. Once we have our quarters, we can convert them into dollars. Let's erase this part so we don't get confused. And once we have converted into dollars, we're just going to divide by number of people and we'll have the amount of money per person. That's your frequency. That's the average of the frequency distribution. The mean of the frequency When they ask you what is the mean of the, of the, of the frequency distribution, what they're asking you is how much money does, a per, does each person have on average? What's the average amount of money per person? That's what it is. So let's add them up. Okay, let's add them up, see what we can get. I have to pay attention, I want to make sure that I don't make a mistake. I see a 7 and I see a 3, that's a 10. And this is 0, 0, 0, this is 6. So I guess 16. I hope and pray to God that I'm paying attention and that I do not make a mistake. So that's a 16. Unless I messed it up already. So we have, oh no, that's a, that's right, that's a 16. So then we have 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 6 is 10. So that's up to, up to here is 10. And then 6 plus 6 is 12. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 12. And this is 10. 6 plus 2 is 8, 9, and 10. 12 plus 10 is 22. So I get 226 quarters. Are you with me so far? There we go. 226, 226 quarters. We have to convert these quarters into dollars. We're going to do that by dividing it by 4. So this is the amount of money we have. This is the amount of money we have. Now we're going to divide that by. Now that we're going to divide it by the number of people number of people. Think, think like that. Even though they do not present it, even though they do not present the question in these terms, you can make up your own version. Here are the number of people. We have we have four people. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna circle this nine again so I can use it again. So here's for your benefit obviously. Here is here is ten. Are you with me? Here is ten. Okay stay with me. There is ten. Ten plus ten is twenty. Twenty plus ten is thirty. Are you with me? Thirty. Then we have 9 plus 9 is 18, 18 plus 2 is 20. 9 plus 9 is 18, 18 plus 2 is 20, 20, 30, 40, and a 50. One more time. This is 10. 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 10, 4 plus 6 is 10. 20 plus 10 is 30. Eight, 9 and 9 is 18 plus 2 is 20. So that's 50. Well, that makes it very easy, actually. That makes the work very easy. You see, the numbers are there for a reason. So we have to divide this by 50. Are you still with me? We are almost done. So we have 226 over 4, which I'm going to write that as 2 times 2, and you'll see that in the second y. Divided by 50, which is the same as 1 over 50. You with me so far? Very good. We are, we are done. We are almost done. 2 times 50 is 100. So I'm going to write this as 226. I'm, I'm showing all this step only for your benefit. Only for your benefit. In the real exam, of course, I wouldn't be so damn silly to actually do it out. So that's what it is. It's 226 divided by 2 times 1 over 1 over 50. So let's let's do it out. 220. So we have to divide this this 226 by 2. 2 cancels out, and 226 will be 1, 1, and 3. It's 113 divided by 100. 113, 113 divided by 100 is what we get, and therefore the average average amount of money that they have is one dollar and thirteen cents. One. But of course you would not put a dollar sign in there because there was no dollar sign mentioned in the problem. The, the average, what is the mean of the distribution? The mean of the distribution is 1.13. If this, if this question appears as an open-ended question, which is most likely how it will appear, open-ended questions where there are no answer choices then you have to put in the answer yourself. Open-ended question appear in the GRE, they appear on the SAT, they appear on the SAT. No, no, they do not appear on the ACT, they appear on the SAT. But even whether it's open-ended or not, it may be multiple choice questions where they give you different answer choice. Anyway, that's the answer. Tomorrow, in the next video, I was planning to do it together. I was, going to, I was planning to do both the methods together, but I, I think I've taken too much time here. So tomorrow, in the next video, on day 180, I'm going to, we're going to do the same problem with a second method and a traditional method. Tomorrow we'll do the same exact problem, but we could do it in a more of a traditional method so you can compare and contrast. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.